I'd like to announce AWS IoT, which is, helps you build IoT applications. We really make it easy for you to actually build Internet of Things applications. These things are really important, of course. The devices by themselves, much of the device building, yeah, much of the sensor building, those folks that actually build these sensors are really good in doing the hardware. They're not necessarily as good in actually building the back-end smarts that actually need to go with it. So we'll give you SDKs that you can actually use on your devices to, uh, to actually then connect them into the cloud. We'll give you network capabilities with MQTT and an HTTP to communicate back into, uh, into your cloud application. We'll, of course, make sure that these devices have a unique identity using X509 certificates, and so you can have us generate the certificate for you, or you can bring your own certificates, so that you can securely identify exactly what the device is and make sure that the data is encrypted on the network. Of course, we have a whole variety of tools uh, available for you to actually store and analyze your data and we will make it easier to actually build smarts using Lambda functions to be triggered by your IoT application. I'd like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Matt Wood, the one and only Matt Wood on stage, to actually give you a demo of how the IoT service is being used. Matt. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Werner. So the AWS IoT platform allows you to much more easily connect devices to the AWS cloud, and it allows your company to more easily collect, store, analyze, and take action against the large volumes of data that are streaming from your connected devices. So let's take a little bit of a closer look and see how all these pieces fit together. So the first thing we've added to AWS with AWS IoT Platform is a device gateway. And this device gateway allows your connected devices to talk over the MQTT message protocol. Now, MQTT is actually a really, really old protocol. It's about 30 years old, but it's found a home with connected devices because it's a highly fault-tolerant um, protocol which is perfect for intermittent connectivity. It's got a very, very small footprint in terms of the code you need to be able to put on the device. And it's very, very efficient in terms of the network bandwidth requirements, which makes it perfect for connected devices. These devices talk over TLS. Uh, this is the successor of SSL. And we make it very easy to be able to create, manage, and deploy X509 certificates for authentication. You can also use SIG version 4 on AWS if you're connecting by HTTP. And you're able to map the roles and policies for access to each of these individual certificates, and then authorize devices to make, have access to AWS IoT, and associate those roles and policies with AWS IAM roles. So you're not only controlling access to the I I IoT platform, but also access to the rest of AWS. And this makes it really easy to be able to authorize new devices, but also revoke access to devices without ever having to touch them. So these device certificates are provisioned, activated, and associated in the AWS Web Management Console or through the AWS IoT API. Now, the device gateway, because it's built on top of MQTT, uses a publication and subscribe programming model. And this allows one-to-many connectivity between your different devices. So the sensors that are moving and talking to the device gateway don't need to know who it's sending data to. They just send the data out, and those that are subscribed to the data will receive it. So this enables a much more scalable environment for low latency, low overhead communications, and it's much more easily to add things and devices. All they have to do is subscribe to the data, and they can start receiving it. So this is particularly useful as the IoT world starts to grow, and billions of devices uh, that we expect to get uh, added to the world start to communicate frequently and with low latency. And under the hood, the device gateway is built in a fully managed environment. It's highly available, and so there's no infrastructure for you to go off and provision and manage. 
And we've teamed this device gateway with a highly scalable rules engine. And what this rules engine allows you to do is take the messages which are being published from your devices and then orchestrate and route them across your infrastructure, your devices, and your AWS services. So you can write very, very simple SQL-like statements. And you can basically use the information which is coming from the devices, both the content of the message, so you can inspect the data. You can do JSON traversal, so you can get all the different parameters inside the message payload. And you can then add those to the rules engine immediately and then start processing the information. So in this example, we've added a rule to uh, detect any uh, sensors which are higher than 50 degrees. And you can also sense multiple devices. So you can add wildcards to these queries, and you can sense not just the content of the data, but the overall context. So you can take data from multiple sources, multiple devices, concatenate and aggregate them, and we have dozens of inbuilt calculations and functions which you can add to these statements to be able to build very sophisticated rules. And at any time, you can add additional rules into the rules engine. So this means that you can continually add and improve the functionality of your devices without having to go and run around and install a whole bunch of software on them. So the rules engine uh, integrates and routes this information. It can republish the, those messages into new pub sub topics so that other devices can consume them. And so for example, you may have a fan which can activate to take down that temperature. And it also orchestrates and sends information to a wide range of AWS services. So you can trigger Lambda functions. You can put this data into Amazon Kinesis. You can store it in Amazon S3. You can move the data to Amazon DynamoDB. And you can even load it into Amazon Machine Learning. So what are some of the use cases for this? So what this allows you to do, because you can now more easily collect, aggregate, orchestrate messages, and collect the data, means you can start collecting it and doing really interesting things with it. So you can take the time series information as a log and just load it into DynamoDB, and then you can have a companion app which will read from DynamoDB. You can take the information and save it onto S3. You can send a push notification to all of your staff. Let's say you've uh, left the office door open. You can trigger any amount of complexity with a Lambda function, and you can send that information into Kinesis using Kinesis Analytics, Kinesis Streams, and Kinesis Firehose. So I just wanted to take one minute uh, to give you a quick demonstration of what this might look like. Over here on the podium, I brought a friend with me. This is a robotic arm, uh, which we bought on Amazon.com and wired up. Uh, it's connected to the AWS IoT service. And what I have right here is a leap motion controller. Uh, this is going to detect motion in 3D above the controller. And we have this sensing the information and sending it and publishing those as messages into AWS IoT. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, controller here, start wiggling my fingers. And you can see that straight away, the robot arm is starting to track my movements. Thank you. I can go up and down, and I could literally do this all day. So what's happening here is the Leap Motion Controller is detecting this movement. It's sending it and publishing that information into the device gateway. That device gateway is sending it down in the subscription model to the robot arm, which is connected here with a very simple microcontroller. So that's the end of the demo. I'll move it down right now. And if you'd like to take a closer look at this, uh, you can take a look at it in the developer lounge. And we'll make it, be making all the source code available on GitHub later today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Matt. Uh, it's a great demo. It also demonstrates all of this data was actually flowing back and forth um, into IED, into our East Coast region. Yeah? That's how fast responsiveness this IoT platform is giving you. So let's, let's sort of revisit what are the different pieces of the platform. There's, of course, the device gateway that helps you with uh, securely communicating between your devices and your IoT applications. There's the rules-based engine that makes it very simple for you to extend the functionality without really having to write uh, large amounts of code. Um, and then there is something called the registry. The registry, you can keep data about your devices. Yeah, and for example, you can ask the registry, give me all uh, devices that are in this particular room. Yeah, it makes it very easy for you to keep track of the devices for you. But there's one piece where we haven't talked about yet. 
Uh, because it's not only about driving sensor data into the cloud and then analyzing it or storing it. It's also you want to actually actuate. Uh, but communicating with those devices might be hard because they may be offline. And so we've, we are delivering a very cool piece of the IoT service, which is called device shadows. This means that you can actually talk to the device shadow. You can actually either read the, the last reported state, version state that the device has uh, uh, communicated, or you can actually set the actuators. You can set what is the state that I want this device to be in, and then the device shadow will take care of communicating with the device itself to drive the change at that particular device. This is a really cool functionality uh, because it makes it easy for you to actually control your devices without having to have this specific knowledge about how to communicate with that device. And especially because these devices are not connected all the time, you can still easily program against the shadow to make sure that once the device comes online again, it actually goes to the desired state. And of course, next to this, you write a lot of Lambda code to actually build sort of the smarts of your application. With this IoT service comes a selection of IoT devices, device SSDKs. So this makes it easy for you to actually build uh, functionality on the device to communicate back to the IoT service. There will be an SDK in C because apparently most of device programming these days still happens in C. Uh, there's also a JavaScript SDK and there's an Arduino library uh, that makes it easy for you to actually control your Arduino boards um, uh, and actually make use of the functionality there to talk back to the IoT service. I don't know if you've seen this actually uh, around, uh, around the hall, there's these hand sanitizers. Yeah? What you probably didn't know is that these hand sanitizers are actually internet enabled. Yeah, so what happens is the data from those devices that are all spread out uh, around the halls here, that data actually flows back into a centralized system where you can see what the current state is of that particular uh, hand sanitizer, whether you need to actually uh, renew them or fill them up again. And so this is a a, a making use of uh, AWS IoT service to build this whole application for you. Again, could they communicate for the device gateway? You have a set of rules that automatically then push that data into Kinesis for your app for uh, analytics as well as storage in DynamoDB, and where you can then actually get your dashboard information about how what the state is of the different. Um, of, of the different uh, de devices. And of course, you can also have a Lambda function that automatically reorders your hand sanitizer on Amazon. 